Okay, so thanks for the introduction and uh, hi everyone. And uh, first, I want to thank the organizer for le uh, for letting me introduce our recent work in this fantastic workshop. And uh, today, I want to talk about the over parameterization of deep ResNet. And basically, I will focus on using mean field tools to study the the, uh, the zero loss phenomenon. And this is a joint work with my colleague Shi Chen, my advisor Qin Li, and uh, Stephen Wright. Okay, so in this talk, I will introduce four different parts. And the first, I will briefly go over the over parameterization and the rest net. And then I will introduce our main re results. And finally, I will pick up some related works to introduce. Okay, so first, I will quickly go through the over parameterization in neural network. So in this talk, we will see the neural network as a tool to approximate our target function yx. And here, x is the input and y is the output. And our neural network is tuned by changing the parameter theta, okay? So now we define the function generated by neural, net, uh, neural network at, um, at, uh, as g theta x and to find the best theta, we need to define the loss function e theta so in our work, we consider the L2 to uh, square loss. And here, y, uh, yx is the target function and the mu is the distribution of input. And in this formula, mu can be the real distribution of the input or mu can also be the summation of, de of delta functions generated by the data set, okay? And uh, the same to find the best theta we need to optimize the cost function. And in general, the cost function from neural network is always not convex. And then according to the classical optimization theory, it's very likely that the gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent will trap in some local minimum or saddle point. However, in real application, these two methods can always converge to zero loss when the system is over parameterized. Okay, then, then this, uh, this phenomenon can no longer be explained by classical optimization results. So it's interesting to study what is the, uh, what is the mechanism that allows, gradient uh, that allows gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent to find the global minimizer, okay? And uh, in our work, we consider the deep and over parameterized ResNet. So we focus on the following ResNet model. Here, F is an activation function. And in the formula, L is the number of layers and M is the number of parameters in each layer. And here, theta is the, is the parameter that we can tune and G theta X is the output of the neural network, okay? And in this talk, we say ResNet is deep if L is very large and, o, uh, and uh, over parameterization means M is very large, okay? Then, then under this setting, we, uh, we can also write down the formula of loss functions. And uh, in our work, we consider the continuous limit of SGD or GD, meaning that we let training step go to zero. And then theta is tuned from our gradient flow, which is our ODE here. And, and, and uh, here, S represents the training time, okay? So now I want to introduce our main results. Formally, we will show that when M and L is large enough, then the loss function will be close to zero when S is large enough. And uh, this is our main, main theorem. And in, uh, and in this result, you can see that when we choose S, M, and L large enough, the loss function is small with high probability. And uh, this suggests that when we have a very deep and over parameterized rest net, it's very likely that the loss function will be close to zero. And here, the lower bound of M come from the mean field limit. And the continuous limit will give us the lower bound of L, okay? Then, and then basically our proof contains some key steps. 
First, we let L go to infinity and consider the continuous limit of ResNet. And the next, we let M go to infinity and consider the mean field limit of ResNet. And in both cases, we can give an explicit convergence in terms of L and M. And finally, we study the, the limiting gradient flow and prove it will give zero loss under some assumptions. Okay. So now, now I first want to introduce the continuous, uh, continuous limit. Here, we first let the number of layers L go to infinity. Now in our ResNet model, if we see one over L as the time step, then one L go to infinity, this basically means the time step H go to zero. Then the ResNet model will converge to our ODE. And uh, the artificial time T it, uh, is from zero to one, okay? And uh, in this limit, our, our parameters are, um, also transfer to parameters depend on T. And we also define the, lo uh, the loss function using the output of the neural network, okay? And uh, the then the gradient flow of the, the, the parameter is no longer a simple ODE. It will become to a coupled ODE. Okay, and here delta e over delta theta is uh, is a full derivative, and basically in this limit for each fixed t, we have an ODE, and for fixed t, theta s t changes in s according to this ODE. Okay, and the right hand side of this ODE depends on the whole profile of theta s t. So this is a coupled ODE. Okay, now. Uh, so now we can also make this limit rigorously. And according to, to, uh, to this result, when L is large enough, we can see that the loss function is close with high probability. And uh, we note that say, uh, this bound of L is sharp in terms of the discretization error, okay? And uh, the second step is the mean field limit. So to consider the mean field limit, we need to let the number of parameters M go to infinity, okay? Then the ODE for C will change to our OIE. So here you can imagine that theta MT is RID draw from rho theta T. And then the empirical expectation will converge to the true expectation. And the next, since M approaches to the infinity, the, the, uh, the set of parameters theta t will be replaced by the distribution rho theta t. And in our work, rho theta t is a curve of probability distribution. This basically means for each fixed t, it, and it's a probability distribution in theta. And the cost function in the mean field regime is still defined by the output, okay? So, so finally, the gradient flow of, uh, of theta should transfer to a gradient flow in rho. And uh, here, when you look at this PDE, if you omit the variable t, this limit PDE is the uh, Wasserstein two gradient flow of rho, meaning that you take the gradient flow in the, uh, in the, in the space of probability distribution with Wasserstein two metric. How, uh, however, in our case, the situation is more complicated. So in, uh, in fact, similar to the continuous limit, we will have a coupled PDE here. And basically we should change rho theta TS in the space of the curve of probability distribution. And for each fixed T, we have rho theta TS changes in S following a PDE, okay? So similar to the continuous limit case, we can also rigorously justify the convergence of mean field limit by showing the, co the cost function is closed with high probability, okay? Then combining, this, say, uh, then combining this theorem with the continuous limit result, we can justify that rho s is the right limit of theta s when l and m is large enough. So, up to now, it's reasonable to consider the equation for rho and E rho to study the convergence of E theta s, okay? So then the so last step 
contains the study of the gradient flow for rho. And basically, we want to show that the cost function will converge to zero when s is, la uh, uh, when s is large enough under some assumptions. So for the, for, uh, for the global convergence result, we, uh, we have the following theorem. We can prove that the, the, uh, the cost will converge to, to zero under two conditions. So first, rho s converges to some limit rho infinity. And the, the limit rho infinity has a dense support for some t, uh, t naught. This basically suggests that if rho converges to some set point or local minimum, then if the limit point has dense support at some t, then this limit point is the global minimum. And in our, uh, in our recent paper, we also gave some conditions when these assumptions can be satisfied. Okay. So now, if we combine the global convergence result so, uh, and uh, the, the continuous limit result and the, mean, uh, and the mean field limit result, we can prove our main result. This basically shows that when m ls are large enough, the cost function is close to zero with high probability. Okay. So, so finally, I want to introduce some related works and some future directions. So um, in fact, there are a large amount of literature and I'm not an uh, expert in this area. So I just pick some papers and there, there must uh, exist other, in, uh, other interesting papers. So the so first paper is Yipin Lu's paper in 2020. And our recent work is, is largely in, in, inspired by their paper. And in their paper, they consider a modified version of the mean field limit, where they also see the artificial time t as a parameter to two. Okay. So the next two papers are from Bach and May are also interesting. And these two papers study the over-parameterized two-layer neural network with mean field tools. And their results can bring some hope to relax our assumptions in the theory. Okay. And the uh, the and the uh, last paper also considers the the zero loss phenomenon in over parameterization setting, but uh, but they consider the problem in a different way. They consider a different scale of neural network, where the neural network will drop into a different regime called neural tangent kernel, and then using some optimization skills, they can also prove zero loss convergence result. Okay. So I have finished my talk and thank you for, li for listening. Okay. Thank you very much for the talk. Very, very